A Charleston arena became a sanctuary and a crowd of 5,500 its congregation, remembering those gunned down in a racially motivated massacre in one of the nation's oldest black churches. The service was more celebration than somber, many noting the gunman's intent to divide people by race had done just the opposite. Someone should have told the young man he wanted to start a race war, but he came to the wrong place. For the president, it was personal. Reverend and State Senator Clemente Pinckney had helped Obama's 2008 campaign. He embodied the idea that our Christian faith demands deeds and not just words. The president's eulogy quickly went beyond the victims to challenging a nation to confront the issues of race, guns, even the Confederate flag. Removing the flag from this state's capital would not be an act of political correctness. It would not be an insult to the valor of Confederate soldiers. It would simply be an acknowledgment that the cause for which they fought, the cause of slavery, was wrong. But the nation's first African-American president didn't stop there. He brought up the issues of voter rights and hiring practices, all seen anew in the aftermath of the killings. Maybe we now realize the way racial bias can infect us even when we don't realize it so that we're guarding against not just racial slurs, but we're also guarding against this subtle impulse to call Johnny back for a job interview, but not Jamal. Also in the audience was a bipartisan group of federal and state lawmakers and at least two presidential candidates. And the president seemed to speak to them, warning that America cannot forget. There would be a betrayal of everything Reverend Pickney stood for, I believe we allowed ourselves to slip into a comfortable silence again. The president ended by noting how the people of Charleston had risen above hate, how the victims' families had forgiven the killer, all showing grace, an amazing grace. Amazing <laughs> grace, how sweet the sound